This is how I know Hollywood has gotten back to work. It's oh, It was so nice to have him all the time, have all of his talents during the pandemic, just bored out of his mind, helping our show whenever he could. But now he's gotten back to like write, writing giant television shows and doing important things. And writing my book. Uh, and helping you write your book. Yes, I'll get to that in a second with Mike Schur. But I'm happy to see his face. And before we go any further, though, the book or anything else, I want to talk about what happened to Boston last night, and I want to talk specifically about why it is that you and Mike Ryan and Jeremy are having these crazed arguments already when you need to pace yourself. We've got two months before any of this really makes you crazy. Will you slow down, please? First of all, I'm made crazy in October by the NBA. That's the difference between me and everyone who works at your show. I actually watch the NBA before the playoffs. <laughs> Second of all, what happened last night was a fluke. The Celtics had a 20-point lead in Cleveland. Some dude that no one's ever heard of hit 10 straight shots in the fourth quarter. There is one thing that bears watching. Tom Haberstroh's whole column on his Substack is about this today, and a lot of people are talking about it. Jason Tatum is one of the worst clutch shooters in the NBA. Not just on the... He's like the fourth best clutch shooter on the Celtics. And he has this one vestige of his Kobe obsession left. It's been driven out of him, except for this one thing, which is that he still thinks that the best shot that the team has with two minutes left in a three-point game is for him to slowly dribble the ball up the court, wait until there's four seconds left on the shot clock, and then take an absurd 20-foot fadeaway jumper. And it's bizarre, and it caught. it is the reason they lost last night. They had and they they are unstoppable those five when they play the team basketball that they've been playing all year. And for some reason in clutch time, he still has this. Now it's not bad that he has the mentality of like, I'm the guy. I think that's what the team needed to take a next step, but it's really bad and I don't like it. And it scares me a little bit. It's the only thing about the team that scares me. Uh, it's so interesting. Sure. Because I can't believe that this is an actual conversation now because we're going to really do this. I remember people hitting LeBron with mentally frail, and then he goes off for 46 in Game 6 in Boston. But when the numbers bear some of this out, when he goes one for nine at, in the fourth quarter yesterday, and when you've come on the show and said, no, that team needed Marcus Smart to lead it because Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum need someone to lead them. And now what's just obvious to everyone, wait a minute, if Porzingis is healthy and Drew Holiday isn't a waterlogged corp like Amin said he is, that four – is better than anybody else in the NBA has is totally overwhelming. But the one weakness you're scared of is that headed toward Jimmy Butler, your guy's not mentally strong enough. I can't believe it's, you're no, articulating that. No, no, no. I'm not saying he's not mentally strong enough. In fact, I'm saying the opposite. I'm saying he's overconfident in moments when he shouldn't be. And need I remind everyone in that studio, most specifically the guy sitting to your left, that the reason Jordan won titles is because he drove – and attracted double teams and then kicked it to John Paxson or kicked it to Steve Kerr. The like guys who could the, shoot, the, yes. The, <laughs> yes. Yes, that's right. And so that I think Tatum is at the level right now where he's like, I'm Jordan, I'm Kobe, but he hasn't reached the next level above that, which is when you're Jordan or Kobe, the thing that you do is draw all the attention and then kick it to somebody who's open. How much are we— and I, but, Go ahead. How much do we blame Missoula for that is what I'm saying. Like, I, I, at some point, someone's got to save Tatum from himself. Well, this was the problem I deeply believe, and I talked about this with Charlotte and Amin and Dan in L.A. months ago. I believe that the problem with the, the old version of this team was that Marcus Smart was, was the big brother and that the, until the big brother left, the little brothers weren't ever going to, like, step up and take over the team. I think they've. I think I've been proven mostly correct in that regard. But the next love, the next thing that the big brother has to do now that Tatum is that guy is understand that the offense functions best when he is a facilitator. And that guy, again, I watch the NBA. You guys don't, so you have no way of knowing Whoa. this. But that guy has oh. that guy has become that guy has That's become an incredible fair. passer. He's right. Very Tatum, fair. Very it's very fair. fair. Tatum like has sports. be Tatum has become an incredible passer. He's a really, really good facilitator of the offense and so all that has to happen is for someone to tap him on the shoulder and say hey man late in the game like let's just run our offense let's do the thing that we do for the rest of the game which is like find the open shooter 
Right, or either drive at least. Do not settle for a 35-foot fadeaway with this little man guarding you. At least, bare minimum, drive to the paint. So, like you said, when the a defense collapses, who? Oh, is that Derek White I see over there? Is that Chris Stops? Mike, either way, I'm passing. Mike, can I, if I may, real quick, I know this Celtics team does not have depth, and I know we can make fun of the regular season. They have Big Al. But do I have it wrong uh, when I say, and you've watched a lifetime of Celtics basketball, that this team feels like it's as good or better in comparison to the league than the one you most recently had that won the championship, which was Pierce and Garnett and Ray Allen. This team, what you're saying is, I don't trust my team, but I'm guessing the next step on this is, and I also think it's the best team I've seen this century from the Celtics. I Listen, the difference between this year and last year is I do trust the team. I did not trust the team last year because – they because Marcus Smart thought that the best shot that you could take late in a close game was him launching a three and he was the worst three point <laughs> shooter on the floor. That is gone now. And now Drew Holiday shoots like 65% from the corner. It's insane. Derek White is like a Derek White and Porzingis are both incredible shooters in clutch time. Jalen Brown is a good shooter in clutch time for all the crap he gets. So I it's not that I don't trust the team. I do trust the team. I I get scared in this one very specific situation. And I think that's an easily correctable situation, and I believe that they'll correct it before the playoffs. Easily correctable. Yeah, I do. I think because, look, if you can get Michael Jordan to pass the ball in the, late in the fourth quarter of a finals game, you can get Jason Tatum to do that. Like, but, just show him the tape of John okay, Paxson hitting but, the three but, and everything will be okay, fine. But, Mike, uh, you've followed the last 10 years. Or show him a tape of Holiday from the corner. I mean. Okay, yeah. but yeah, yeah, you guys do this. But what's funny about Stugatz is he roars with laughter right now. Stugatz spent 10 years in the very comfortable lane of, hey, LeBron James might be the second best player of all time, and all I'm going to do is criticize him for passing at the end and saying he's a choke artist. And now you're telling me Jason Tatum has to prove something else, which is he's got to learn. No, I need to shoot less and be the man as we pressure him to be the MVP of the league and the leader and the guy who's the top dog on the Celtics, as we argue every day about is Jokic the best player in the league? And he says he's the face of the league. He's going to have a pressure to not pass it now that's going to come straight from your laughing voice, to guys. But, Dan, when you're all those things, and this is what Mike is saying, when you're all those things, you get the attention, especially at the end of big playoff games. And Mike is saying, if you're getting that attention, give it to someone else who can shoot. I know, shoot. but you criticize LeBron James for seven years for not having a killer instinct because he would pass in those situations. That was then. This is that's that. why he wasn't as good as Jordan. Are you forgetting this? No, I remember. Somebody, this is the scene I sit in. It's a great one. Somebody should at least tell Jason Tatum that we would love a shot from you within the paint. In those situations. Get to the rack. Right. Stop trying to be Kobe. Stop trying to have that moment. Brother, we need a W only. And finally, to be fair to Tatum, he was fouled three times yesterday on that final play. So, like, I, I look, I'm not. No, he last kicked year, out. He, ca he caused the contact with his. He caused the contact with his legs. He was fouled we before can't, that. We there can't talk a, about that, though, big brother. We, we lost a 22-point lead in the fourth quarter. No, That's, it was a disaster. Look, it was a disaster game. Would you rather be the Celtics right now or any other team in the league? I would always rather be the Celtics than anybody in the league. You already know who you're talking to. Oh, no, but you say that, and yet you – wait a minute, though. Wait a minute. You'd rather be the Celtics. No, I, I agree. I would agree with that. Everyone would agree with that. But Jeremy you know, wouldn't. You know he is – well, but he, wait a minute. Mike Schur is tortured, emotional fan. He has warned you for years. He's been more right – than anyone in the media about what was going to happen in that sport and was yelling it from mountaintops for months. He was saying, my Celtics are going to break my heart. I'm terrified of the heat. Now this team is better. They, they do the controversial hard thing. Marcus Smart, we know you're a fan favorite. Get out of here. And they get two guys, Porzengas and Holiday, who make them appreciably better. And yet you still fear the heat. So you can't tell me that you you want to be the Celtics more than everyone else, but you have a fear. But headed into yesterday, the Celtics were 364-0 and when leading by 20-plus points in the fourth <laughs> quarter, dating back to 97-98. Like, yesterday was just a blip on the radar. 
I was uh, headed That's to correct. yesterday. We beat the brakes off of the uh, the Warriors, and they tried Jalen Brown for some reason, leaving him wide open. I think that was Jaylen, amazing, right? I think Jalen Brown's confidence is finally at the moment where we'll give him a chance at the end of the game or two. It, it, something has to change about the the late game strategy from Joe Mazzola. Did you happen to see the text that I sent to Meadowlark employee Matt Sullivan about the next four Heat games? Have you seen this yet? Uh, yeah, she said, you, you predicted, we're doing this, you're going to become Kornheiser and Wilbon, the I told you so. You've predicted all of these well, games you keep correctly. Saying he was right. The well, only one yes. that was right. I all mean, right. Well, he, priva- he only told Sullivan. He privately texted <laughs> Sullivan, yes, only Sullivan, almost the exact scores by which the Heat would win the next four games and what would happen. He has been a, uh, he's been a truth teller. But when you mention the thing about Jalen Brown, I saw Draymond Green said this. He says, we're 3 and 0 on a road trip. We were going to let Jalen. Jalen Brown shoot three-pointers because he shoots them at 34%. But not if you don't guard him. If you don't guard him, he shoots them at 40%. But does anyone think that playoffs are going to have with people not being guarded out there? Like, <laughs> what what are we talking about on what it takes to be the, beat the Celtics when you're sitting here saying to us, the only way they beat themselves is with themselves, and it's if Tatum can't figure this part out. Well, yeah, obviously they're not going to let anyone be unguarded. No one's going to let anyone be unguarded at the three-point line. But what does that matter? Like, look, I it's not that I don't have fears. Of course I have fears. I live every day of my life with crippling anxiety about the sports teams that I root for. But this is not last year. The team is different. Their offense is different than it was before. They have more weapons than they had before. The Nuggets lost last night to Phoenix. Like every team, like the the reason that the, there's so much high, there's so much highlighting of a game last night for the Celtics is because everyone's looking at the Celtics. So like, you know, you can why why isn't everyone talking about how Jokic didn't come up big last night in overtime? It's because the Nuggets aren't as good as the Celtics this year. Well, he won that a doesn't title mean the Celtics. Too. It, it you doesn't can talk yeah, about it, right it doesn't now. mean. Floor's yours. It doesn't mean the Celtics aren't 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 like don't have problems. It just means that like all, the whole spotlight is on the Celtics because they've been they their first team in NBA history to win three fifty point games. So everyone's looking at them, and that's just the deal. And I I think that the team has to own it and understand that they're the best team that they should win the title, and and let the chips fall where they may. Right, with great uh, power comes with great responsibility. Yeah. So you are That's definitely right. right. And I think that you are right as well with the Suns last night because they collapsed. They they gave an epic comeback and in for the uh, the Nuggets, but then the overtime, Joker was nowhere to be found. So you're right. The, more more support to Mike Sure. Everybody, ladies, he's and right about everything.